What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about here on a daily basis. Multiple things to talk about here that's going on here right now. Check this out. Former President Donald Trump asked the Supreme Court to intervene in the Mar-a-Lago dispute where the FBI went and searched and seizured the classified documents that is government property. They took them back. Trump is now asking the Supreme Court to intervene in which Trump personally, personally put three of those members on the Supreme Court and six of the nine Supreme Court justices are Republicans. So this is where things are going to get really interesting. And also remember that the special master was picked by former President Donald Trump as well. Let me know your thoughts on this. Here's the details. Lawyers for former President Donald Trump asked the U.S. Supreme Court to step into the legal fight over the classified documents seized by the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago, escalating a dispute over the powers of an independent arbiter, the special master appointed to inspect the records. The Trump team asked the justices to overturn a lower court ruling and allow the arbiter, called the special master, to review the roughly 100 documents with the top secret markings that were taken in the August 8th search of Mar-a-Lago. The three-panel judge from the Atlanta-based U.S. Court of Appeals for the 11th circuits, uh, Circuit last month limited the special master's review to the much larger tranche of non-classified documents. So now Trump is unhappy with that and has escalated it to the Supreme Court. The judges from that 11th Circuit, including two Trump appointees, sided with the Justice Department, which had argued that there was no legal basis for the special master to conduct his own review of the classified records. But now Trump's lawyers said in their application to the Supreme Court that it was essential for the special master to have access to the classified top secret documents, quote, to determine whether the documents bearing classification markings are actually, in fact, classified. And regardless of classification, whether those records are personal records or presidential records. Quote, since President Trump had absolute authority over classification decisions during his presidency, the current status of any disputed document cannot possibly be determined solely by reference to the markings on that document. That does actually make sense to me. It says that without the special mass review, the unchallenged views of the current Justice Department would supersede the established authority of the chief executive. An independent review, the Trump team says, ensures that, quote, a transparent process that provides much-needed oversight. The FBI says it seized roughly 11,000 documents, including about 100 with classifications markings during the search. The Trump team asked a judge in Florida, Eileen Cannon, who was also appointed by Donald Trump, to appoint a special master to do an independent review of the records. So let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. This is where things are getting very, very sticky, for lack of a better word, because three Supreme Court justices were personally appointed by Donald Trump. We have other judges here who were personally appointed by Donald Trump. Six of the nine Supreme Court justices are Republican. And, I mean, openly. 
And let me know your thoughts on this. Do you think that this has a bearing on the case? Do you think this has uh, an overbearing on the case? Do you think that this that they can be fair on this? It is a very, I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a lot of people talking about this on Twitter. A um, lot of lot of people talking about this. Just watch uh, Supreme Court turn down Trump 9-0 to zero or 8-1 to one if Judge Thomas dissents. Will Donald start calling his three justices traitors? If they turn him down to even hear it, or if then then they vote against him, will he call them traitors as well? Yeah. Um, let me know your thoughts on this. So it's just uh, you know Trump. If if uh, if anything goes against him, that's let me know your thoughts on this. It's gonna be very interesting here. Putin's military is on the run while Vladimir Putin formalizes his annexation here to claim about 15% or a little bit more of Ukraine as part of Russia as Ukraine is literally driving them out of parts of this region. Kiev said that its troops were making rapid advances in the south and the east, retaking land and exposing the Kremlin struggle to match its political theater with reality on the battlefield. As Biden pledges $625 million more in weapons to Ukraine in a call with Zelensky. Remember that all the money and weapon and aids Really, it's it's weapons uh, mostly that's going to Ukraine. It's not Biden that really, you know, he ultimately signed it. Remember, all that money in weaponry uh, and and stuff that goes over to Ukraine has to be approved by both Republicans and Democrats in Congress. It's not Biden that gets to make the decision. He just gets to sign it at the end. It has to go through Congress first. Republicans and Democrats had to agree to it in Congress first. It's a both it's a bipartisan bill, Republicans and Democrats first. So I know Republicans want to blame Biden on that first, but Republicans had to agree to all that aid first. Here, take a listen. The Ukraine, which is moving to expand its push to reclaim more cities captured by Russia during that now seven month long war. And to bolster Ukraine's advances, the U.S. is sending more military aid to the region. NBC's Aaron McLaughlin on the ground for us inside Ukraine this morning. Hi, Aaron. Good morning. Good morning, Savannah. Overnight, President Zelensky declaring dozens of settlements to the south and the east have been liberated this week alone, saying his soldiers aren't stopping there. Last night, President Biden called President Zelensky to discuss a new $625 million aid package, including HIMARS and howitzers. Meanwhile, this morning, Russian President Vladimir Putin signing into law the illegal annexation of four Ukrainian territories land the Kremlin doesn't even control. As Russia is scrambling to get more troops to the front lines, Russia's defense minister saying they've managed to muster 200,000 men so far, although tens of thousands have fled Russia. And this morning, a first for the Kyiv region, Iranian supplied kamikaze drones striking a number of critical infrastructure targets, setting buildings on fire and injuring one, according to Ukrainian officials. Savannah. McLaughlin, thank you. Appreciate it. How will the U.S. respond to a Russian nuclear attack in Ukraine is a very big headline right now. This is a very real possibility as Russia's having a very hard time. Putin's being backed into a corner and just might use nukes as one of his last lines of defense. And how the U.S. will respond, because nobody wants a nuclear war, 
but Russia just might do it because they're desperate. And a, a nuclear attack is nothing that anybody wants, but what might happen? This is because Putin says himself that his nuclear threat is no bluff. You can see the headline here. We should take him at his word, which we should. We should at least prepare for the worst. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but they have 6,000 nuclear bombs. 6,000. Even one. You think about what happened in World War II, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Um, that's Those were just one each. So... And uh, what's going to happen with Putin here if they lose the war or what happens here um, if they win the war, if they lose the war, whatever, if he tries to save face, you can let me know your thoughts here, but this isn't something we want to happen. Nuclear fallout is, is deadly. It's terrible. And imagine spread of that or if a nuclear exchange happens. I mean, uh, the U.S. National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, last week said that there would be, quote, catastrophic consequences should Moscow deploy nuclear weapons and said a more specific ultimatum had been delivered to Moscow privately. So the White House directly is communicating with Russia, telling them not to do this. This is how serious the White House is taking. So this is not just scare tactics or media pushing this. I mean, the White House is taking this very seriously. President Biden has said since the start of the war that U.S. troops will not be sent to Ukraine. Experts warn that a nuclear response to a nuclear attack could escalate into a nuclear world War. Retired General David Paterius offered a prediction on how the U.S. would respond to a Russian nuclear attack on Sunday. I, I showed that video actually, though he noted that he didn't talk to uh, Sullivan deliberately. He said, "Quote: Just to give you a hypothetical, we could respond by leading NATO a collective effort." Would, that we could take out every Russian conventional force that we see and identify on the battlefield in Ukraine and also in Crimea, uh, Crimea and every ship in the Black Sea. But then Russia could also respond by using more nukes. So, yeah, this isn't exactly a easy answer and that would push Putin even further into a corner and when you push a rabid dog into a corner what do they do they they bite back so yeah i mean what do you what do you think's going to happen here what do you how does the war end how do we end how do we see an end resolution to the war that's what uh, if you're if you are a strategic advisor to the president, how do you find an ending here? If you were if you were a strategic advisor to Putin, how do you find an end to the war here? How do how do you amicably end this war? Yeah, that's that's something that's not easy to find here at this point. If you just kind of think about that, if you're if you're on Ukraine's side. Uh, Ukraine's having success here after after really losing a lot of ground. I mean, they, they lost a lot of ground for a while. Uh, now they're taking some of it back. Uh, they, they took over 6,000 square miles back, and then now, now it's got to be even more than that. I haven't seen a recent figure. I don't know, 7,000, 8,000, something like that. Um, so now they're taking a lot back, but um, I don't know if they'll get to the point where they take it all back. But um, would Russia even stop? The thing is, Russia just called up 300,000 new troops. Um, yeah, so 
that's a lot of troops, man. That they're training them and getting ready right now. That's a lot. I mean, that's like remember that at the beginning of the war they had a hundred thousand plus at their border, and they moved them in. We'll we'll say one hundred fifty. Now they're training and calling up three hundred thousand new ones. That's twice what they started with. So that shows you how how serious Putin is to like not stopping here, man. That guy is relentless. Imagine if you lived in Ukraine. And then don't forget here, just recently, top Russian lawmakers threatened to take back Alaska as well. Because uh, Russia sold Alaska to the U.S. in the 1800s. And they said, oh, we'll, we'll take that back as well if we, if we deem we want to. So... <laughs> don't don't forget that Russia's a little bit crazy uh when it comes to this stuff. They sold Alaska to us for like it was like seven million dollars back in the eighteen hundreds. So they they literally imagine if they try you know, they're trying to claim part of uh Ukraine right now and then they can defend it with any means necessary, such as nuclear bombs. Imagine if they try to reclaim Alaska and then Defend it with any means necessary as well. Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here with everything going on here in our country on a daily basis. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, click the subscribe button down below. It's completely free to do so. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Click the bell icon after you subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos. And don't forget to hit the like button for us as well. You can click here to watch my newest video next. And here is another video about checks actually going out this week to millions of Americans that you might not even know about. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.